Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Justin Thomas Jr. Championship Q&A. It's our pleasure here to welcome you to the Harmony Landing. I want to introduce both of our guests today to everyone. Uh, first, we have uh, Mike Thomas, Master Golf Professional here at Harmony Landing for nearly 30 years. Uh, you can see Mike out traveling with Justin as his swing coach day in and day out. Uh, teaches a lot of junior golf as well. I want to recognize Mike first uh, just for everything that he's put into this event. I mean, he's put so many time, uh, so many hours into making this event what it is and allowing us to give a considerable amount back to charity. So first, uh, welcome Mike Thomas. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Justin Thomas. Justin grew up here in, in Goshen uh, at Harmony Landing, 15 PGA Tour victories, two major championships the 2017 PGA, the 2022 PGA. Um, Justin was 2017 PGA Tour Player of the Year, 2017 and 2020 uh, PGA of America Player of the Year, and he's currently number 14 in the official World Golf Rankings. Please welcome Justin Thomas. So what we're gonna do out here today uh, is um just do a, some Q&A, so get your questions all ready. Before we got started, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, there's so many people, uh, the AJGA staff, uh, the membership at Big Spring and Harvey Manning uh, for allowing us to take their golf course for five or six days. Uh, all the volunteers uh, that make this, uh, make this work, and certainly my committee for, for all their help. They uh, the part that they have in uh, making this such an, a great event, and, and we want to continue making it better. But uh, last and certainly not least, uh, all the sponsors. Uh, without all the generous donations from all of our sponsors, and many of them are playing either this morning or this afternoon, uh, without their money, uh, without their financial uh, contribution, uh, we would not be able to put on the, the type of event we're putting on, and nor would we be able to raise the funds that we have both towards the ACE grant and Justice Foundation, which benefits uh, military families in need, uh, children in need, and junior golf. So a big hand to all of our sponsors. We appreciate it. And certainly thank you to uh, Justin to take the time out of a kind of busy schedule that he has. Uh, to make it uh, his importance of being here. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to do that. So if you don't, if you have anything you want to say, if not, uh, we'll fire away on the questions. Yeah, th thanks to everybody for being here, both players, uh, parents, you know, like my dad said, the staff, everybody involved, it, it does mean a lot. And, um, you know, having uh, having an event on the AJG is something that's important to me because it's a, it's a junior tour that I uh, feel like I really started on. Uh, it got me to to the next level and kept me going and, and got me to up here in front of you all right now. So I obviously think very highly uh, of the AJGA and and glad that we can keep improving this event and hopefully making it enjoyable for you all. Um, and like I say every year, if, if not, it's my dad's fault, not mine. So, uh, but yeah, feel free to ask away. Um, you got free reign on, on questions here uh, within reason. And uh, yeah, please... Please do. All right, thanks everybody. Yeah, <laughs> Come on, let's hear it. What's the best advice you've ever gotten that you could pass on when somebody's struggling in golf? Um, I mean, I would always say, at least I'm trying to think of it and selfishly, like for, for me is it's, you're never as far as you think you are. Um, it's. This is a, I mean, to be perfectly honest, kind of a dumb game that we play sometimes. Um, it, it can just, man, it can toy with your emotions. It can make you do and think so many things or want to change things when, and then, um, you know, then you go play one round and it's just that one shot that everything clicks and then you get on a little bit of a rhythm or a run or whatever it is. And um, for me, it's just about, you can always use failures as an opportunity to learn. And I think I was very fortunate to learn that at a pretty young age, but not as young as y'all are. And, um, you know, it, it took me from leaving golf tournaments or days on a golf course where I didn't play well when maybe in past I would be sulking or be miserable and, and honestly not very fun to be around to 
saying, okay, well, why did today go bad or why did today go wrong? What did I do that I should do differently or do better? So then next time I'm thrown in the same situation or, or given the same challenge, I'm going to know how to overcome it. And I think once I was able to understand that and learn that better, um, it, it helped me a lot. So that's what I would just say to everybody to kind of embrace the challenge of what's going on and, and try to use any failures as an opportunity to learn. Uh, yeah, go ahead, right here in the red. Being, <laughs> what's it like being in the front of magazine covers, he asked. Um, well, you know, I'm very fortunate that they have a thing called makeup to make you look a little bit prettier um, because I need all the help I can get, and it's it's great. It's um, it's not really something you grow up thinking is going to happen, but when it does, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Go ahead. How do you uh, divide up your time when you I, uh, yeah, time management is something I think is very – very important um i would say i'm not like a specific i do this many hours the these days of the week every week i'm home it's it's more so what do i feel like i need to accomplish you know it's like okay my wedge game isn't as good as i would like it to be i need to work on some speed putting and then next week i'm playing i hit a lot of three woods off the tee so maybe i will create some extra forms of practice things to do to work on those things. And it's not necessarily, like I said, a time uh, commitment. It's more of a, okay, I want to I want to achieve this drill or I want to accomplish this drill or, or I literally just want to hit until I feel comfortable with it. And sometimes it's 15 minutes, sometimes it takes a couple days. And um, and I think that's just helped me. It's, it's more of a trying to get some kind of plan of what you want to do. I mean, I know when I'm, when I'm home next week, you know, once I get, back Saturday, Sunday, I'll kind of map out the week, like, okay, I'm going to practice a little beginning of the week, and then I want to play the rest of the week to see what I feel like I need to maybe work on, and then use those last couple of days before I go to touch up on anything, and then, you know, come time when I get to Charlotte, everything should be good to go. We uh, we spend a lot of time, uh, both Justin does, and, and I do with all the juniors that I teach, of uh, everything has to involve uh, performance practice, to where you have to approach your goal. So it might be uh, a four-day drill with 20 putts, and you got to make uh, 16 other varying distances. Uh, we have tons of distance drills, uh, hit numbers uh, with wedges, uh, can't miss left and can't miss right uh, off the tee. Uh, every, everything is performance related so that your your practice is a lot more efficient. Uh, we, want that, we want everything in our practice to resemble on-course situations. We want you to feel nervous when you're trying to make that 15th putt out of the 20 putts. So, so you're feeling the same emotion that you're going to feel on the golf course. Yep, go ahead. When uh, when things started going well, you're saying? Like, what was your clicking moment for you, like, when you were able to turn it on back and kind of make it start to Um, yeah, it, it was it was strange because in my career, I've always been a leaderboard watcher. I just, I, I want to know where I'm at. I, I want to know what I need to do. And for some reason, um, and I mean, this kind of goes back to what I said earlier, I previous like last year being in the beginning of the year I had a handful of chances I felt like to win tournaments you know I'd go into Sunday two three four back and I felt like I had a good chance and I got very wrapped up in what was going on and what other people were doing so I was watching the leaderboard and because of that I didn't handle it very well so I felt like to give myself any kind of chance which was not a good one starting Sunday at Southern Hills that I need to not look at a leaderboard and I just need to I mean I'm seven back I just need to make a lot of birdies and, and I need some help and I just I stuck to that. I didn't look at one, I think, until like 12 or 13. They're pretty large, so they're unfortunately hard to miss. Um, but I just I truly was playing my game and sticking to everything. And, um, I mean, I made a nice birdie on 9 and then, um, and then again on 11 and 12, and I felt I could just feel a different energy, like in the crowd and the roar that – I felt like without looking at a leaderboard, okay, like I, I, I have an actual chance here um, or I'm, I'm getting somewhere near the lead. So that was kind of for me when I could feel the energy almost change.
We have somebody back here. You might have to holler your question out. Justin, who's your favorite teacher that's not sitting next to you? The one thing they did that helped you steer your life in a new direction. Like instructor? No, any who? Um, What's that? Yeah, definitely wasn't anything I learned in high school, that's for sure. <laughs> My brother taught me in high school. Yeah, yeah. It's actually funny you say that because uh, I, I do remember something that a, an English teacher, uh, Mr. Crow, told me at St. X. He told all of us, it's be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And it's very similar to what my dad was saying in the sense of uh, you want to be in those positions um, where you're nervous, you're, you're uncomfortable, and then you also need to embrace that challenge and want it because I think it's like, an, it's not a cool thing to, to say that, oh, uh, are you nervous out there? Like, oh no, I wasn't nervous. It's like, well, if you're not nervous, it doesn't mean anything to you. So you're, you know, if, if, it, if it doesn't mean anything, you shouldn't be doing it. So I think kind of embracing that challenge and wanting that feeling is something uh, that y'all should embrace.